Hello! What's up guys? It's your old pal Tanner Babcock here coming at you with another brand new video. Uh, gonna make a short announcement right now. This is going to be my last video for a while. I'm going to be taking a short hiatus right now because I'm going to move to a new city. Obviously that's a big deal. <laughs> I'm not going to have a lot of money, I'm not going to have a lot of time to just make YouTube videos, I'm not going to have a internet for a while, so I don't know when my next video after this is going to be, so <laughs> I hope you guys don't unsubscribe. <laughs> I will continue making videos uh, very soon, hopefully, you know, before the end of this year, but... I've got that out of the way. I'm going to talk about my GitHub sponsors profile. Yes, if there is anyone out there at all who would like to give me some money, uh, I would really appreciate it. <laughs> the best way to do that is by uh, going to my GitHub profile and sponsoring me. Here is my GitHub sponsors profile. These are all the reasons why I need some money. Here's a lot of examples of my work, a lot of uh, homework projects I've had in classes throughout the years, and some other stuff that I'm really proud of. If you do choose to sponsor me, uh, you can give me however much money you want. You can uh, pay for a monthly subscription to my GitHub profile, and you will receive all of these features here. You can choose to give me $4 a month, or $8 a month, or $16 a month, or $32 a month, or $64 a month. Or you could choose to give me your own custom amount, and you could give me as much money as you want to. You could also sponsor me and uh, give me a fixed one-time payment. I would still very much appreciate that. I still very much uh, need money. <laughs> and I would definitely make it your, worth your while. If there's anything you want from me, if you need to learn anything, if you want me to make like a tutorial or a cheat sheet for you, I would be really happy to do that. Just uh, send me an email or send me a message and sponsor me on GitHub, and I would be really happy to work with you. But anyway, moving on, topic of today's video is Doom Emacs. Yes, I'm on that Emacs train now. Uh, I've been using Emacs for a year, probably less than a year. Doom Emacs is how I started. I first started using Vim in probably 2018, late 2018. I first started learning about Vim and trying to open all my files in Vim. And anytime I needed a text editor, I would figure it out how to find Vim and you know, do whatever I needed to do. And, you know, even as an Emacs user, I still do use Vim a lot. <laughs> but uh, Doom Emacs, out of all the distributions of GNU Emacs, Doom Emacs is probably the, uh, the easiest and the friendliest for uh, long-time Vim users. If you've been using Vim for a long time and you want to switch to Emacs, but you know you're intimidated, the the key bindings freak you out. <laughs> they kind of freak me out. Uh, you don't understand Emacs. You don't get it. You don't know what the point is of learning Lisp and installing all this stuff on your system. Uh, Doom Emacs is for you because <laughs> Doom Emacs has something called Evil Mode, which perfectly emulates almost all of the Vim key bindings and commands. So anytime you want to open a file, if you're editing a file and uh, you're in Doom Emacs with evil mode, you can just do, you know, colon W, you know, to, to write the file, or colon WQ to write the file and quit. All of that stuff will work in uh, any type of Emacs that has evil mode, just the exact same way that it would work in Vim. So that makes it really easy. That made it a lot easier for me to transition from using Vim into using Emacs full time. 
Uh, it's, it's really alluring and attractive, and the fact that they have this compatibility layer that makes it so you don't have to learn all of this, all these other key bindings, you know. <laughs> control X, Control C, Control X, Control S. Yeah, you don't really need to worry about all of that. I mean, some Emacs users will tell you that you do need to learn the actual GNU Emacs key bindings, but I'm not one of those guys. Evil Mode is great. If you know how to use Vim, if you're already comfortable with Vim, it's going to be a totally seamless transition. <laughs> Uh, that's how I got started with Emacs. It's mostly thanks to DistroTube, because I would watch his videos, and uh, I would try to look at his Emacs configuration and see, you know, what he's doing and try to put that into my own configuration, you know, so I can have a cool Doom Emacs set up like he does, but... Yeah, there's a lot to customizing Emacs. It's all written in Emacs Lisp. That's what Emacs really is. It's just a Lisp interpreter. That's what Emacs is at its very core, and yet it's so much more than that. Emacs can be a music player. It can be an RSS reader. You can use it to connect to IRC and, you know, chat with your internet friends. You can use Emacs as a, uh, a Git client and manage your Git repositories. There's all kinds of tools for managing projects, for, uh, for editing your code. There's all types of packages that are really easy to install and really easy to use. Um, there should be a simple way, yeah. To install Doom Emacs, it's really easy. You just have to clone this repository on GitHub and make sure you clone that into your a uh, yeah dot config slash Emacs directory. I'm pretty sure that's how I installed Doom Emacs anyway. But now I'm gonna fire it up. I have to always make sure the Emacs daemon is running because Emacs, you are supposed to start it in daemon mode or a server mode so you constantly have the Emacs server running in the background and anytime you open up a new Emacs window you're going to want to issue the command Emacs client which will connect to the Emacs server. I've already started the server, so I'm going to use my key binding to open Emacs. It's mod, shift, and comma. I'm going to go ahead and open Emacs here. <clears throat> now this is what my Doom Emacs looks like. When I first open it, this is the Doom dashboard. A lot of people who use Emacs use a different dashboard that's just called Emacs dashboard or just dashboard like DistroTube uses that instead of the uh, the prepackaged uh, out of the box Doom dashboard a lot of people prefer that dashboard package and uh, I've tried to use it it's pretty cool but uh, <laughs> I've already put too much work into my Doom dashboard, and I think the Doom dashboard just looks so much cooler anyway with all these little icons here. <clears throat> so I just have a shitload of key bindings in the, in the Doom dashboard mode. So there's lots of different letters I could type right now to bring up all kinds of things. Uh, if I wanted to bring up my music player, which is called MPDEL, I'm going to press the semicolon key, or I could just click this menu item, but I'm going to press semicolon. And that will bring up a, uh, a playlist here. Here's my album X. I've loaded that into my uh, MPDEL playlist. This is a, an MPD client for Emacs that allows you to uh, 
control MPD from within Emacs, the same way you would use NCMP CPP or uh, CMUS or uh, MPC. So I can just choose one of these songs in the buffer here and I'll press enter. And that is going to start playing my album X. I would like to show you how this works with a, a real album, but I can't really play any music on my channel that's not my own music or my friend's music, so <laughs> that's all right, though. It gives me a chance to promote myself. I have some key bindings in the, uh, the MPDEL mode like P to play and pause, enter to select a new track for playing. It's going to show me a little notification there. I can use the uh, the right and left arrows here to increase and decrease the volume. The same way I would use those keys in a NCMP CPP. This program. I've added a lot to my configuration to make uh, this MPDEL playlist screen uh, look and act like this standard NCMP CPP music player that I'm used to using. It's kind of a hassle to use Emacs as your music player, but uh, I really like it. I think it's really cool that Emacs can even do this. This package, MPDEL, uh, does not ship with Doom Emacs out of the box, so if you want this, you would have to do uh, Alt X or MX, you know, package, install, you know, and then you type MPDEL, you know, to install the package MPDEL from within Emacs like that. So this is my playlist view. Uh, any buffer I'm in that I want to kill and uh, just close out of that buffer, I can do the key binding space U, and that will close that buffer. If I want to kill all of the currently open buffers, I can just go back to this uh, Doom dashboard screen and press K. <laughs> and that said, kill to 20 buffers. These buffers really start to add up. Uh, the more you open stuff and use stuff. So it's a good idea to have a key binding that just kills all of them. <laughs> you can look at your buffers. My buffer menu opens with a space comma. I think that might be a standard binding. It might not be though. So from my Doom dashboard I can do lots of things. Uh, if I want to open a recent file I'll just press R and that runs the uh, the recent F mini buffer down here with the help of Helm and it's gonna list some of the recent files that I've been editing. If I want to open my website tannerbabcock.com also known as tbcom I can click on this menu item or press T. I'm going to click right here so I can show you what happens when I click this menu item. This is going to open up my repository for my website, tannerbabcock.com. Here's a little buffer here. This is called Deerhead. Like Deerhead. This is the Emacs uh, file browser. You can use these uh, up and down arrow keys within Deerhead. If you have evil mode, you can also use the J and K keys, the Vim key bindings, to go up and down the list of files here. If I want to open up a file from within DRED, you just select it and then press enter. 
and that will open up this file for editing home.php the home page of my website that's right here and uh, let's see how it looks let's see how this git repository looks with some some changes blah 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 just a little comment there in the PHP code that does nothing and will affect nothing as you can see there are these little uh, plus signs because I think the package is called VCS gutter that shows you these plus signs next to the uh, the additions and if I want to close out of this buffer and go back to the uh, this dred buffer I'll close out of there again kill the buffers open up a uh, tbcom and dred again and as you can see there's this little symbol here this exclamation mark for uh, an unstaged changed file these are the changes blah 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 right here I'm going to show you some more stuff I could do with that in a minute I'm going to open up my video notes so I can remember what I'm supposed to be talking about I can do that with the V key this will automatically open the file in my uh, org directory, in my home directory, and this file is just called video.org. So this is what an org document typically looks like in Emacs. I think people who are not Emacs users have a hard time figuring out what an org document is, all of the stuff that you can do with org mode. You can write these org documents, but you also have a, an org agenda to help you organize your life. There's all these tools. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the type of person where I just want to type in every single thing I'm going to do today into, into fucking Emacs. Like, I just put that in my phone. <laughs> but I love editing stuff in org mode. Uh, almost all of my configuration files, at least the configuration files, not just for Emacs, but for Z Shell, for uh, BSPWM, for Waybar, for Polybar, you can write all of these configuration files in org mode, entangle the code. That, uh, that those programs need to read. I hope you all notice these nice fonts, these nice serif fonts that blend in with the, uh, the mono space fonts, my tried and true space mono nerd font. Here's the headings. There's uh, different levels of headings in org mode. And I can change the level like this by adding or removing asterisks from before the headline like that. So that's cool. These headlines, you might notice, they have this, uh, this keyword highlighted that says to do. This is literally, it looks like a fancy symbol, but it's literally just the word to do. Like if I do backspace, that's all it is. Just type to do, and it's my package uh, org modern, which makes it look really nice like that. So this is how you can use org mode to make to do lists, uh, to organize stuff for projects. If you have a lot of things you need to work on and you need to keep track of it, you know, just do like, here's another thing to do. You know, and uh, in my Emacs config, if you want to mark this item as done, no longer to do, but done, I can just type a uh, space D. And I'll press D to change it to done. Yeah. 
Here are all of the key bindings I have for, uh, for using org mode. These key bindings work. Uh, these key bindings are global. They work in all buffers ever, always. But uh, really, these key bindings are only supposed to be used or typed from within an org document. I can do a space apostrophe and space backslash to increase or decrease the, uh, the priority of the to-do item. So you can see it says number A, number B, number C, and then I'll do a space backslash and it goes back down to B, goes back down to A. And if you wanted to, you can customize that so it doesn't have to say uh, hashtag A, hashtag B. You can use uh, emojis if you want, but you have to specify those in your config.el file. I can use space equals sign to insert a timestamp. So I'll do that. It's going to bring up this little calendar in the mini buffer here. And uh, the default date, you can type in the date or click the date that you actually want, but today's date is the default. So I'm going to, just to show you, I'm going to click on a 27 here. And it's going to insert this little tag into this headline here. So you can see this date, 2023-03-27, Monday. And uh, it's org modern that makes it look really nice like that. <clears throat> and if I want to remove this item, I can just issue the, uh, the same key binding that Vim uses. If you want to delete an entire line, you just do a lowercase d dollar sign. And that will remove that line. If I want to search for some text, if I want to search for the phrase a uh, timestamp, just like in Vim, you just press slash. Just press slash and then type what you want to search for. And uh, it works just like Vim. It shows you uh, how many matches it found in the file. If you want to do a reverse search, uh, that's a question mark instead of a slash. <clears throat> So yeah, I have these key bindings here to uh, help me out with my org documents. I can actually show you the, uh, the configuration for my Doom emails, config.org. This is my main Doom Emacs configuration file. <laughs> There's this HTML here because you can actually export an org document into HTML. And this HTML code will be exported uh, when this document is exported that way. Here's the table of contents. Uh, Org documents automatically generate this table of contents for you. There's some stuff I gotta put at the beginning. You know, customize this, customize that. <laughs> I think I can change this. Yeah. You can click here and change the size of the the split. So we can get a better look here. So that Doom dashboard menu I showed you, it is made up of all of these functions which I stole from somebody else's Emacs config. <laughs> they use this code to kind of uh, pick out a random splash phrase and put that on the Doom dashboard package that I use. I just copy and pasted all of that. You know, because you can kind of do that with other people's Emacs configs. If they're doing something that you think is cool, you know, you can just put it in your config and see how it works. Here's some functions I've defined. Now here is the menu. <clears throat> 
all of this right here is responsible for my Doom dashboard menu. I had to type all of this and figure out exactly what types of code I could put in which places. <clears throat> Uh, each menu item on my Doom dashboard has a different color. This one's red, this one's blue, this one's yellow. And uh, these menu options are connected to some of these functions that I've defined to uh, help me open certain configuration files. <clears throat> this is my big list of key bindings for, uh, for the Doom dashboard mode. Almost every key on the keyboard, lowercase and capital letters, uh, they all do something. They all open a file, or they will open a type of buffer, or they will open the help or they will interact with MPD, or they will connect to IRC, you know, lots of stuff like that. <laughs> this is the Doom Dashboard mode map, where I define all of these key bindings, and you have to put these little descriptions here, and you have to write a tiny little function if you'd like to open a file. <clears throat> that's really cool. So now this document, config.org, this is not actually the configuration file for Doom Emacs. That is actually config.el. But see, what I can do is you can tangle an org document. My key binding is right over here, space L. If, I, if I'm in my config.org and I do a space L, tangled 30 code blocks from config.org. Now what that does is it takes all of the code that is inside of these code blocks here, all of this Emacs Lisp code, and it uh, exports it. It just, it's like a copy and paste as long as there's code in these little boxes here. The, the org tangler is going to take all of this code and output it into the, uh, <clears throat> the readable config.el file. And this is just one example of using what's called a literate configuration file. Lots of stuff in here. I'm going to close this for a minute, go back to this document. Yeah, you can also use a shift up and down to change the priority. You can also use a shift plus left and right to change the, uh, the label there. Now I'll talk about Magit, one of the craziest packages, one of the most productivity increasing packages for Emacs, and honestly like a staple within the arsenal of every Emacs user. It's called Magit, and Magit is what helps you manage Git repositories. I'll open up my tb tbcom repository again, which is the repo for my website. Now, as you can see, I'm just in DRIT. You know, I haven't opened any files yet. If I want to uh, do a Magit log or a Git log and look at the list of recent commits for this repository, I'm going to do a space Y. Oh, wait. No, that's my git status. It's space E. Space E is the Magit log. So just like you would use the program TIG, the n curses git clients, which is really cool, uh, from inside Emacs here, this package called Magit will show you a little git log. 
If there's other branches, it'll illustrate the other branches and it shows you the, uh, the hashes for each commit. If you want to see the details or the diff of the commit, you just uh, select a line. Each line is a commit and you press enter. And that will open up a split, a split window here and show you the diff of this individual commit. And I believe this is using a package called a diff hl diff hyphen hl. I think there's a way to have even more syntax highlighting from within the Magit uh, revision buffer. But this is what a commit from inside the Magit log typically looks like. It'll tell you all of the insertions and deletions and it'll tell you all the files that you've modified. And I can just do space U to kill that buffer and it's gone. If I want to look at another commit, one where I edit the CSS, I think I can change, no. This is really cool. And if I want to open up a uh, magit status, which is like the command git status, do space u to get out of that, go back into the dred for my uh, git repo, and it's what I did the first time, space y. It's going to tell you the head, it's going to tell you the merge, it'll tell you uh, what branch you're currently on. I'm not on the master branch on my repo, I'm on the feed branch because I'm working on implementing an RSS feed for my website. <laughs> so that's what, what's going on here. And it's just going to give you uh, one line for each file that has changes that you might want to add to the staging area. If I want to add this file home.php to my staging area, I just have to select it and do a space T. And as you can see, it immediately changed from unstaged changes to staged changes. And if I get out of here, if I kill all these buffers, you know, get out of Emacs, my tbcom rep repository is right here. I'll do a gs for git status. And as you can see, this file home.php has been added to the staging area. Now a lot of people love to make commits and push from inside Magit. I know that's possible. Right now that is not working for me. <laughs> because uh, I use a GPG key to sign all of my commits. So if I wanted to commit my, uh, my dumb changes to home.php, yeah. This is TIG, by the way. This is a really cool program, too, and it looks just like uh, Magit, the Magit log we were just looking at. There's only a couple changes, but I'm going to go ahead and commit git commit m uh, yeah and you see when I commit here it gives me this little password prompt I, I know there is a way to do this in Emacs I just have not figured it out yet uh, but if you if you use git and you have a git repo and you don't use a gpg key to sign your commits uh, you really don't need to worry about it and you can probably safely and easily make commits from inside magit i'm just going to show you how i commit you know from the command line i'll type my little passphrase there and it'll make that commit And then if I want to push, if I want to push that commit to the remote, I'm going to type git push u origin feed. 
and that will push my changes to GitLab. I do have key bindings set up in my Emacs configuration so that I can pull and push from a git. It's, uh, they're, they're not written here. It's space J and space K. I never use these. I might change these. It's actually not a very good practice uh, to just bind a function to like space Y or something. It's supposed to be like uh, space Y P or space Y D. But yeah, that's really cool. Can look up my uh, dot files repository. Any Git repository that you have, uh, either on GitHub or on GitLab, instead of having a readme.md file in the, the root of this repository, you can have a readme.org and GitHub and GitLab will actually uh, interpret this org file. These are some images here. It's possible to have inline images from within a, an Emacs org buffer, but they look like links. These are real images. These are actual links. You can have uh, some code text there. And yeah, it's pretty easy. I mean, if you can write Markdown, you can write an org document. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff, a lot of characters in an org document that are not immediately visible, but that's just for the sake of a uh, completeness and giving the illusion, like with links and stuff, if I just press backspace, that's what a link is. It's uh, these two left brackets, then a URL, then a right bracket, then another left bracket, and then two right brackets. And that will give you a nice link up here. I also use an org document for my, uh, my shell script. You can even write a shell script from within org mode and have it tangle to uh, an actual file. This file tangles to uh, fetch.sh and you have to add this option here, shebang, with bin bash, so it actually tangles like a real shell script. And here's my dot files fetcher script. Now, uh, Let's look at some other people's Emacs configurations. I mean, because that's that's a big part of the fun of being an Emacs user is just going out and looking and seeing what other people did. And I actually think GNU Emacs uh, promotes that type of community and that type of collaboration. So I just googled Doom Emacs configuration. This website is techosar.github.io uh, Thanks for letting me look at this on my video. But yeah, this is a nice page here. This looks like a legit, you know, professional grade, but still kind of basic, uh, web page. It has a black background and white text, and it has this funny XKCD comic. And it has these nice headlines with these permalinks you know, that you can click there and jump to that headline. It has these numbers here, and this might surprise you, but this entire web page, this entire HTML document was exported by this Emacs user from within org mode as an org document. And this person probably wrote their own CSS or they could have uh, picked up some CSS from one of the, the org packages on the MELPA. <laughs> That's the, the Emacs package repository. See, they have this table of contents here. And 
you can click on one of the headings and it'll jump to that heading. Uh, Emacs takes care of all of this for you. <laughs> if I wanted to uh, <clears throat> export my uh, export a configuration file that's an org document into an HTML file, I just have to do this. See, here's my uh, .doom.d directory. It only has a few files in here. And I kind of have to do this thing to get the table of contents to show up. I can do a space L to tangle the file. And this tangles to this file, config.el. But uh, if I wanted to make uh, an HTML page out of my Doom Emacs configuration like this person did, <laughs> this, person, this person has flowcharts and images and, <laughs> you know, a lot of JavaScript. So this is really like a shining example of uh, the productivity of Emacs and org mode and the community of Emacs. If I wanted to export the this org file as HTML, I'm going to have to do this thing, block out the table of contents, just because there's this weird glitch with that. Yeah. I'm not an expert Emacs user yet. But yeah, and make sure this line is in here, TOC, headlines 2. I don't save this file, but what I do is I press space P, and it'll give me this message down here, wrote doom.d slash config.html. And if I do an ls in this directory, as you can see, config.html is right there. What does this file look like? I can open it in Vim, and it's just a totally valid, uh, totally verbose, also, uh, HTML file. <clears throat> and this HTML code that I've written right here for my header, for my uh, navigation links, this code is exported into that file. <clears throat> And if I wanted to add this config.html to my GitHub pages, it's going to appear right here. My Doom Emacs configuration. And this is that exact same file that I just exported from within Emacs org mode. I picked out one of the default CSS styles. Uh, that it lets you choose from, but I've heavily tweaked it to make it look nicer and more readable and stuff. So here's all of the config. Here's all of the code I've been showing you all throughout this entire video. Uh, it renders these tables really nicely. It's really nice to be able to look at a, an org mode table like that. <laughs> and you see, I have lots of configs that I've done this with. I mean, if I go back to the home of my GitHub pages, you know, I have foot for my foot configuration. <laughs> this is just the config for my foot terminal. Uh, that's an org document because why not? A uh, cute browser. My cute browser config is an org document and this tangles to a config.py waybar it's another literate configuration file and this uh, this table of contents that pops up this works because I did that weird hacky thing on a from inside Emacs this table of contents will work and you can just click like river laptop bar and click that and it will jump to that section of the, the web page. 
And so anytime you see someone's Emacs configuration published on the internet like this, like this person is using uh, one of the default CSS styles that is included with org mode, this person published their Emacs configuration and they generated this file using org mode and they probably pushed it to their website's repo using the git and <laughs> are you starting to see are you starting to see the point I'm trying to make about how awesome Emacs is and how if you customize everything exactly the way you want it You know, you can just get crazy productive. Open up my config one more time. This is a big config. I know, I was gonna show my L feed. So I've been getting into RSS feeds, as I've mentioned before. I mentioned that Emacs can do RSS feeds and uh, that I'm trying to implement an RSS feed for my website. But uh, this is LFeed, the RSS viewer for Emacs. I can press E or I can just click on that. And it gives me this really nice display here. I can use the Vim key bindings J and K to kind of go up and down the list. This L feed buffer is a little slow just because I have so many URLs in there, so many feeds. <clears throat> you can customize L feed and add RSS feeds to it uh, using an org document. Okay, it seems more responsive now. So now I have a lot of different sources here. Uh, each RSS feed item is a different color to denote uh, the website that it's coming from. Like here's a Tumblr blog. Here's a regular Tumblr post on a Tumblr blog, an artwork by Peter Solers. And as you can see, it has inline images right in there. I mean, that's really cool. You can look at Tumblr without having to go on the website, tumblr.com. That's cool. <laughs> Yeah, give it a second. This is the only part of my Emacs that is ever this slow. <laughs> and it's only slow because it's making a lot of the uh, curl requests to all of these websites and stuff. And I can use, I have made these uh, key bindings, like if I just press P, wait, no, oh shit. Well, this used to work, but it's no longer working. I used to be able to filter by, uh, by website. So I guess I'll have to fix that. But like, here's some torrents from my torrent sites. Here's a OMG Ubuntu. Now I can click on that. And if I wanna, if I just wanna browse, if I just wanna jump from one uh, feed item into the next feed item, I can use capital J and capital K. Now we'll jump to the next thing. Now here's a Reddit post from uh, one of those support subreddits. All of those links work too, by the way. And you can choose to have the URLs open inside Emacs or to uh, send it out into a browser like Firefox. So that's really handy. I mean, I can just kill a lot of time just browsing RSS feeds from within Emacs and these images show up in line. So that's really cool. If I want to get out of this buffer, I just do space U. That is my key binding to kill any Emacs buffer. Just get rid of it. <clears throat> and L feed gives me these, you know, these errors and stuff all the time, but those don't really mean anything. I'll get rid of this buffer too, and I'll uh, I'll kill all of my remaining buffers. K. 
Okay. There we go. Well, yeah. I hope this has been an illuminating video. Uh, I hope that I've <laughs> made a pretty good case for Emacs, why you should use Emacs. I've already made an Emacs video before, but I don't know if people really got what I was saying. <laughs> Emacs is just crazy. My emacsconfig.org is over a thousand lines long because <laughs> it's all of this. Every line of code right here does something. Does something objectively changes the behavior of a Doom Emacs. You know, each set of packages that I use, I'm going to want to define some key bindings. I'm going to want to define some functions. Here's a thing I haven't shown off yet. It's, uh, the multiple cursors. So I can select a place, and then if I do a control shift, yeah, control shift click, that will create another cursor, you know, like Sublime Text. I'll do Control Shift again, and then click again to make a third cursor. So I just figured out how to do this with the multiple cursors recently. That's really nice. And then you just press I to go into insert mode like you would do in Vim. All of these cursors are here. You can go left and right, and they all move at once. You know, and if I want to delete multiple lines, just backspace, just like that. If I want to get rid of them, just press escape, escape. So that is a really powerful package. If you're new to Doom Emacs, I will show you how to install the, uh, the basic selection of recommended packages in, uh, in just a second. I'm going to kill this window. Kill anyway, yes. I'm going to open the, uh, the other configuration file for Emacs, init.el, or for me, init.org, which tangles to init.el. So this file kind of has a weird syntax, but it's this really long list of packages here. If you don't want a package, you can just uh, comment it out with semicolons there, and uh, Doom Emacs would actually remove the package that you commented out. Or if you put it back in, if you want to have, you know, the, uh, the minimap or whatever, you uncomment that and you would run a doom reload and that would install the, the newly uncommented package right here. But I don't want minimap. These are all the packages that I have installed. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that Doom Emacs offers you, and they have these funny little uh, descriptions here that tells you uh, what each of these packages do. I have Tremax, I have the VC gutter, which I was talking about earlier. A lot of people like the window select, which is the package winner, I believe, and uh, the, the workspaces package. That one seems really nice too, but I don't use those. <clears throat> Here's the multiple cursors package, which is awesome. I have vTerm. I don't have a whole lot of tools here. I have Magit. I have a it's RGB, the rainbow color string. These are packages to uh, make it easier for Emacs to work with and edit and run unit tests and uh, you know detect the environment for a variety of uh, languages and build systems like you got Go, Haskell, JavaScript, Julia, Lua, Nix, PHP, Python, <laughs> 
all kinds of stuff that you could want. Emacs also has an email client, a built-in email client, which I don't use, but I would, I only don't use it because I have Proton Mail. If you have Gmail, you could easily use Emacs as your email client. You use IRC, which is the package called SIRS. That's the IRC clients for Emacs. Here's RSS, which installs a, that's LFeed. And then I have some other stuff here, which for some reason or another, I found it necessary to put uh, this Lisp code in init.el instead of config.el because init.el is loaded first at the very beginning of the Emacs daemon session. My Doom dashboard shows me a random image every time. Every time I open uh, the Doom dashboard, it's going to show me one of these image files. So that's really fun, that's really cool. Uh, all of these images are on my dot .files repo. All of my literate configurations are in my dot .files repo, so if you want to check those out, there's going to be a link to those in the, in the video description. I have some hooks here and just a few more preferences here, and then there's the footer. And my init.org aka init.el. This is on my GitHub pages too. This isn't my website that I pay for, tannerbabcock.com. This is just the free website that uh, GitHub gives you. And you know that makes it easy, so you can just make a commit of a new HTML file, and I'll grab those HTML files out of Emacs org mode and put them in this repository and push them up and they will appear on your GitHub pages site. So this is the file I was just looking at in Emacs. Yeah, you can have all kinds of fun with this. <laughs> Looks like this file needs to be updated. So I'm going to do that right now. All I really have to do is uh, Instead of tangling this file, just export it. It's HTML. I got to do my little thing here. And then I don't save. <clears throat> and then I'll do a space P to tangle. <clears throat> And as you can see, it says wrote init.html. I'm going to close this buffer, close all those other buffers. Go into dot doom dot d here. And as you can see, now along with config.html, which was exported from config.org. I also have init.html exported from init.org. So if I want to commit these uh, exported org documents to my GitHub pages repo, I'm just going to type mvconfig.html git slash babcock.github.io configs doom.html. And I'll do that with the other file too. mv init.html git babcock.github.io configs init.html. And I'll go into this repo. I have unstaged changes here. I'll just do a git add configs. So I'll do a commit, do a commit. Sign my commit there. I'll do a git push origin main. Oh fuck, that's right. SSH keys problem. 
git push origin main. Now it's pushed those changes, and now I'll just hang out on my GitHub pages website here. Should be able to do a refresh. Come on, hard refresh. It'll get there. <laughs> Go back home. Emacs init.org. It takes a few minutes to update, but yeah, I could. Pro there's so much to my Doom Emacs configuration. I will probably have to make another video <laughs> at some point to get into the rest of it. I hope this was. I don't know. I hope this video helps you uh, understand Emacs a little better. I hope it makes a case for switching to Emacs uh, from Vim. Uh, I hope you guys understand it's a, maybe a lot easier than you maybe think it is. Uh, I think it's worth it. I think Emacs is worth the the big learning curve and it's worth all of this stuff you gotta understand now. Uh, it's worth learning about org mode and org documents. It's worth, you know, it's just worth it. I love using Emacs. The typical Emacs user just lives in there. I mean, they never leave Emacs. Everything they have to do on their computer, they can do it from with inside Emacs. It's not just a text editor, it's a file manager, an RSS reader, an email client, and, uh, and so many other things. Why wouldn't you want to use Emacs, you know? <laughs> well, anyway, guys, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed my video. I hope it was illuminating. I've added quite a bit to my Emacs configuration since the last Emacs video I've made, so I thought I would make another one. Uh, thanks for watching. If you guys like my content, if you appreciate what I do, if you had fun watching this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Be sure to check out my GitHub profile, check out my doc files, sponsor me on GitHub. I would really love that. And uh, check out my website, tannerbabcock.com. This is that home.php I was just looking at earlier. Anyway, guys, it's been fun. This is going to be my last video for quite a while. Uh, I really appreciate all of the support and all of the attention. And if you've ever watched me or if you've ever left a nice comment, uh, just thank you. It really helps. It really makes me.